This is Mike Bot. Today I'm going to be doing a two part series on must have 3D printing tools. So part one here is basically going to be focused on tools that help you remove supports, tools that'll make your life a little easier with your prints to clean them up, deburr them, fix them, that kind of thing. Part two is going to be basically uh, based on uh, materials that'll help you bond plastic prints and repair them. Basically stuff in that relation for part two. So anyway, we're going to focus on part one today and uh, we're gonna start with the tools that are must-haves for basically cleaning your prints and assisting you with support removal and cleaning your bed and all that type of stuff. So first things first, I'm gonna point over to each and every item. All the links for these are in the description below. Feel free to click on them to get an idea of what they are and what they cost kind of thing. So this is just my recommendation to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by pointing towards this. So this here is my latest tool and it's probably one I should have bought a long time ago. So it's basically a mini hand drill. So you basically uh, hold the end here and it free turns. So why this? It helps you drill little tiny holes into your prints when you need them. Now, in some cases you might say to yourself, why do I need small holes or why don't I just model the prints to have the holes in them or whatever. Well, that doesn't always come to mind when you're modeling. Some people don't know how to model. I actually don't know how to model myself. And sometimes I decide that I want to hang something, but I just need a small little tiny pinhole and I don't want to risk ruining the print. So that's where this drill comes in. It also helps with cleanup to a certain degree, which I will try to demonstrate that if I can. So next, what we have here is my favorite tool out of all of these, and it's the uh, deburring tool. This one is by AFA. Comes with a bunch of different uh, blades here, so 30 to be exact. Uh, I usually, I've only used the one blade that it came with installed by default. So basically, as you can see, it free spins and it's really, really, really great at cleaning the supports up. So um, next, I will point to this, an X-Acto knife. I'm sure all of you already have one of these. If you don't, good to have in your uh, collection of tools. This was my favorite tool for the longest time, and this comes in handy quite a bit. I actually use this almost on every single print. This here is a two-point scriber. This is the ADC fixed version. There are many different models, and this is a cheap knockoff version, not the official version, which is very expensive. Uh, something everyone should be familiar with is isopropylene alcohol. This is needed basically to clean your bed. I uh, use it with every print, so as you see, I have it in a little spray bottle. I printed a couple of funnels here. Basically uh, helps with filling up that small bottle. Uh, next, uh, I use this mostly, well, I used to use this for my uh, woodworking hobby, which I still do. Uh, but I've also noticed that this comes in handy with 3D prints. And this here is basically a carving kit. So it comes in a little leather case. So many, many different sizes here many different uses. They are extremely sharp. I also recommend you pick up a sharpening kit, so maybe a leather strop and maybe an owning kit. Uh, basically, because these are so sharp, they help scrape little tiny pieces of plastic off the print. I will try to demonstrate that as well. So over here, some basic stuff you should have. Um, this here is a scrubber, copper scrubbing brush. I use this to clean the extruder wheel. Sometimes it gets filament buildup on it. I also use it to clean the nozzle. Good to have a few of those laying around. This is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle cleaner. Everyone should have that. And then a couple little very, very sharp micro tip needles, needle nose pliers, and then various different little pliers. Uh, this one here comes in handy quite a bit because of the angle on it. And then it's good to have a couple, uh, one that's a wire cutter and then a straight one. And then obviously one of these. Um, everyone, everyone, everyone should have two or three or four of these laying around. They are basically needed to cut filament, help you remove supports, everything. So last but not least is digital caliper. Don't cheap out and get a cheap one. Spend the extra money and get a high-end one. I had to go through three before I realized that mistake. And these are pretty accurate. As you can see. So I will zero it. And 
I will demonstrate how this works. So basically, as you can see here, um, try not to, as you can see here, it's 3.37 millimeters thick. So whenever you do your uh, slicing and prints and model designing, you need one of these basically to make sure everything uh, measures up to the size that you designed it at. This is also a very, very handy tool for extruder E-step calibration. I use it quite a bit. All right, so that's basically the quick overview. Now I will show you how some of these tools work. So uh, I have here a little Easter bunny I did. Um, I purposely knocked off this, the support during this, the uh, printing process. So we could basically uh, have that issue there. So I'm gonna turn down the brightness on my light here, just so we can get a better view. All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you the deburring tool. So basically with this deburring tool, you use it and basically it helps you scrape off things on weird angles. So as you can see here, it's very, very sharp. Removes the little edges and helps deburr your prints and make them nice and clean. Now that was a bad example for this. So I will go ahead and show you the scriber and how this comes in. See how that just popped right off? The scriber is probably one of my, my second favorite and most used tool I have. And then, as you see, it's cleaning nicely in there. And I just use my deburring tool to clean it up a little. That's basically how that works. And then obviously, if you have an issue, you can just kind of grab your pliers, pull away out of it. Um, there's no example I can show you with this, but it basically drills small holes by hand. So that's an example of that. I will now just show you the deburring tool once again in greater detail. So you can hear that sound and you can see basically how it's taking off little tiny pieces of plastic. So you can see here the print is not perfect. So I will scrape away. It is free moving. Uh, sometimes you do need to hold it down if you want to get more granular with your uh, deburring basically. Uh, these ones here, I'm not going to be able to really show any examples because I don't have a clogged nozzle or a nozzle that needs cleaning right now. So I will basically just grab a clean nozzle and give you an idea of how that works. So here we go. Right here, we have a 0 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Basically with this, you want to make sure your nozzle is hot. Use protective gloves so you don't burn yourself. And basically... So you can see that goes in like that. Uh, typically you would go in from the other end, but it doesn't really make a difference. Everyone has their way of doing stuff. Okay, so next I will do a quick cleaning on this paintbrush holder and uh, paint mixer. This one was printed with Pedgy. It's very, very stringy. As you can see, tons and tons of screen, uh, stringing. So it's a good way to demonstrate this deburring tool. So this video is not meant to be extremely detailed in length. It's just meant to give you an idea of some tools that I recommend you having. And I'm just showing you how they work basically. So see how that's giving that a nice little cleaning. Getting rid of all the stringing nice and easy. This one, out of all these, this one and the scriber are probably the two you should definitely, definitely have from this video. If you were to learn anything from this video, those would be the two tools you should grab. Again, the links are in the comments. Um, when you're using an X-Acto knife, you need to be very, very careful. It slices through PETG and PLA like butter. And 
different heads that come on this deep burring tool. I've never opened any of these, so I'll just show you in the back. They're all different angles, different uh, styles, and they will all come in handy. So just for the sake of this video, I will just throw a drill bit in here. Because I really want to show you why I like this tool as well. So there's the drill. Uh, what's something I don't really care for at the moment? Let's go with this. So basically, because the end of it, because of the end of it here just turns, it makes it easier just to kind of hold it with the palm of your hand and spin. And you can already see that it's starting to go in. That's how efficient that is. This comes in handy for more things than you may think. And all of these things are really cheap. Like they range between 10 and $20 minus the caliper here. This is pricey, but if you're like me and you end up buying three uh, knockoff versions, it'll cost you as much just to buy the one. So out of all these, these are probably the least used right now, ever since I got the deburring tool. But if you do have one of these laying around, I will show you how it works really quick. But the deburring tool does the same thing, but this one is able to get more granular. Again, if you have an X-Acto knife and a deburring tool, it basically does what these are gonna do, but this one just lets you get more granular with the stuff. So if you have the money to spare, go for it. If you don't, get the deburring tool. I've been collecting this stuff for over the years, so it's not like I bought them all overnight. This is two and a half years of 3D printing tools that I've been working on, basically. All right, so that's it for now. That is part one. I just wanted a little short, sweet video just to give you an idea of some of the tools that I highly recommend you have for your 3D printer. Stay tuned for part two coming uh, in the near future at some point. That's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, if you want any further information, subscribe to my membership and we can do one-on-one -on -one sessions, run you through how this stuff works. Or if you were just stopping by to just see what I'm talking about, great, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, comment. Thank you all for watching today. Mike Bot out.